250 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow, sharecropping, the Ku Klux Klan, lynchings, bombings, mass incarceration, the separation and destruction of the black family. All of that has had an effect on our mind. Our mind needs to be decolonized. We today are experiencing mental slavery, not physical slavery as once our ancestors had to endure. In my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, we take you through every step to start releasing the chains that's on your mind. He or she who controls the mind, control the person. It is in a vested interest of the white supremacist system to keep your mind bogged down in a mental slavery, throwing entertainment, throwing drugs, throwing alcohol, anything they can at you to keep you bogged down. You got to free yourself from mental slavery. By purchasing our book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind today on Amazon. Make sure you share it with your family, share it with your friends. Everyone can benefit from decolonizing the mind because once your mind is decolonized, you will never be put to sleep again. So it was the story that, you know, we viewed here about a young brother, you know, playing football, just doing what a lot of young brothers do, dominating. And when them folks are being dominated by a brother in football, they start coming out with their racism. Let's go ahead and roll that clip. By all accounts, it was a good game. The Bologna Eagles beating out the Monel Hornets in a classic Friday night matchup. But the friendly rivalry quickly turned sour. One move from Arkansas commit Nico Davlier caused chaos in the press box, with Eagle Vision commentator Corey Erie calling the teenager a thug trash player. The comment caused fans to call foul. It's tasteless for children to witness that. Danielle Simmons is a mom parent to a pre-K soccer player. She says there is no excuse for insulting a student. I can't stress that enough, they're children. And she says the unkind language can have lasting consequences on younger players. What you say to them is what they will become. If I tell my son every day you're a bad boy, then that's what he has in his mind. Others are in agreement. Bologna High released a statement soon after the comment went viral, saying while Eagle Vision and Erie weren't sponsored by the school, these comments do not align with the core values of Bologna High. Mymel coach Kirk Horton over the phone said it was unfortunate that a grown man would make a comment like that about a student. And parents like Simmons there should definitely be some type of training. want something to be done. Erie, in a written statement sent to us, said he got caught up in the game, explaining, I will make no excuses about what I said, nor will I try to defend my comments. It was wrong. I want to extend a sincere apology to Nico Davlier and his family. I'm sure that he's a great young man, and my comments were never about him as an individual. I told y'all time and time again, anytime you hear them say the word thug, we established this, what, years ago? that when they say the word thug, they're saying the N-word. We, we know this by now, but just for people that may be new, um, coming to the channel, maybe even heard that before, that's what they're saying. Because, you know, how they look at it, how dare, you know, this young black man dominate these white kids in a sport? How dare they do that? Because, you know, like I said, that's by the only legal way you could really get at them in America would it not really be an issue and a problem? And it could be an issue and a problem because how many times have they cheated in sports against black people? You can look at recently Simone Biles, for instance, in the Olympics. You know, she has this particular routine that nobody else can do. And how are you going to penalize Simone Biles for something that she worked on and, and doing the gymnastics field that others can't do? Why are you penalizing her? You know what I'm saying? But and it's natural. It's not nothing... Um, that she was doing that was illegal. Or if you have a higher degree of testosterone, which, you know, scientifically, black people do. You had the two sisters, I think, were in the Olympics as well. Uh, they were talking about they had a higher degree of testosterone uh, than the other uh, runners, and so they couldn't compete, but yet they had a whole man. Um, in a weightlifting competition, talking about that he was transgender. So, it don't matter about his testosterone, but it matters about the, the natural black women uh, that had there. So this is 
you know, nothing that we shouldn't be surprised at. My thing is, you know, these people are so hateful. Can't stand black folk, but they want to go and watch black folks run, play, do everything else. And you want to see how their racism come out. Just watch when black folks respond to, you know, their situation. That's why I say sometimes I, you know, I said many, many times. I know in America it's hard because black folks just don't have the wherewithal. I'm going to call it what it is. Get mad in the comments if you want. You don't have the wherewithal to create your own leagues. Not that you can't do it. Not that we don't have the money to do it or even the know-how. We just don't have the wherewithal that you want to do it. Um, a lot of us, you know, still feel that um, the white man's ice is always going to be colder. Uh, we don't want to work with other black people. So we're going to just continue to deal with the same issues and problems and complain about it. So as long as we are dealing with their system, what they have established, and we're still being players or employees or anything else, of course you're going to deal with those problems. That's part of the culture of white supremacy is racism. They're always going to look at you as a thug or anything else they're going to call you, especially uh, us as black men. You know, they feel that we are their direct competition and they are fearful of us. That's why they don't want us to get into anything because you can look at in history how we have been shut out and we just get an inch and then we take the whole mile and they know that. That's why they want to keep brothers out of learning the financial game. They don't want brothers to learn real estate. They don't want brothers, you know, to know just about anything. Like like the uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man don't want you to know the art of business and the art of war. That's the two things that he don't want you to know as black people so you know this guy here of course he come out talking about his apology but they don't it, 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 like we said many many times before the apology to me is worth a drop of pee it really is um because they only saying that when they get caught what they did in the moment is really them um he's just trying to save his little uh announcer job now the school was for the right thing even the coach the coach said it was unfortunate what you mean unfortunate Unfortunate is it's like not nothing racial, but this is not unfortunate. This is racism. It's a white supremacy. I would want to play on that team no more if, if my coach come out and say, oh, well, that's unfortunate. They stay on cold with each other when they use the word unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So, you know, the mom also in the video, oh, well, you know, you got to watch what you say. Uh, people turn out that way. Okay, you want to speak on your son that you know you saying just because this racist said that about him, supposedly, she has no clue. She has no clue whatsoever. But if you watch this video, mom, for whatever the reason, he didn't call your son a freaking a thug. He called your son the N-word. They just, but we have kind of deadened them to doing that. A few years ago, we kept pointing them out doing that. When they start calling black kids thugs who straight-A students never got in trouble with their thugs, Everybody up, uh, come on now. We, we we already knew what it's about. But, you know, let me know in the comments, you know, ladies and gentlemen, about this particular story. Um, it's just like I said, typical racism. We we know that the culture of white supremacy is not going to change. But, uh, yes, let me know. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store. Starting your locker natural hair journey is oh so rewarding, but can be extremely stressful when you start to consider what products to use. If that's you, then look no further. Locklicious is a black owned company that has created an all natural product line for locked and loose natural crowns. The Locklicious team works hard to ensure that their products are free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, PEG, synthetics, and other toxic chemicals you find in other products. Best of all, the products are lightweight and will not leave residue or cause buildup. Go to locklicious.com to start treating your crown like royalty.